So we are here in Madrid for the festival. We decided to explore the city and we also escape rainy Paris. Huh? Isn't it supposed to be a channel about France? Yes, and it is. But today we take you on a short trip to Madrid as we flew there to attend a music festival and see the amazing Sugar Babes and Melanie C from the Spice Girls. This video was recorded in autumn last year and it was supposed to be published back in early November. But life hit us in the face and it got delayed. We caught an early morning flight from rainy Paris on Iberia Airline and as you can see, Sinan was a little, shall we say, scared. The flight was good with a special thanks to one cabin crew who gave us free snacks. She didn't charge us for some reason, so gracias. As we were landing in Madrid, Sinan was not having it. I absolutely love the architecture of this airport. It's so beautiful. It's so pretty. And it's so uh, bright. I love it. We stayed in a residential neighborhood called Acacias. As it felt chill, it was connected very well by public transport, as well as was relatively affordable. We dropped off our bags, had some snacks, and headed out to the center. We start at the Kilometer Zero of Madrid, a logical place to begin our visit. Located at Puerto del Sol, this is a symbolic center point of the country. In the early 2000s, the point plug was flipped by error and had to be put back in the correct direction in 2002. Apparently the bear is the symbol of Madrid, we had no idea, we just learned it now. And it's so funny, in a sense that people just surround this statue and they're climbing up and they're going crazy over it. But it's a cute statue. Yeah, they also they also touch the ass of the statue. Not the ass, the bum. Be nice. Yeah. The bum. <laughs> yeah, they touch the bum of the statue to bring luck. That's yeah. why the statue has white on that side. Also, iPhone 15 apparently launched, so there are people queuing. All of this queue is going to to get the phone apparently. Crazy, crazy. While walking around the streets that branch out of the Puerta del Sol, we could not help but marvel at the magnificent examples of architecture from different epochs. Here, you have everything from Vienna Secession style, Plateresque, Neo Mudejar, Art Deco, and early 20th century architecture. And our tradition continues in Madrid too. We just bought this, it's really cute. And you can see it's a symbol of Madrid. We have a collection of the cities that we have been to. We also added Madrid into our list, and we are so happy about this. I noticed that the street signs on the buildings in Madrid are so beautiful. And I've also learned that apparently it's not Madrid, or it's not Madrid, it's Madrid. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and call it Madrid and not Madrid. If I mispronounce it and people who speak Spanish, uh, let me know. <laughs> but I'm gonna try and say Madrid. <laughs> We're walking around today, basically the plan is really simple because we have to go to the festival soon. And uh, we just decided to walk around. There are a couple of plazas that we wanna see and um, public squares. And then tomorrow it's gonna be more, you know, more filled with uh, exploration and, you yeah, know. We'll have a full day tomorrow, so. Yeah. Today it's just exploring, walking Because we around. just arrived and we yeah. went and we ate and, you know, we walked out just to walk around on the streets. Even though there are so many people, it doesn't feel as rushed as Paris. Yes, yet it feels relaxed. <laughs> I was relaxed. telling Sinan today, just now, an hour ago, I was telling him, I feel like it, we are back in the time when we went to Rome. Yeah. Even though Rome was also supposed to be busy, but we felt so um, uh, chilled out, you know. Oh, the sun is suddenly here. Yeah, we felt so chilled out and... In Paris, you feel yeah. like 
it's always people are rushing, yeah. people are in a hurry. Yeah. And there's always some kind of stress that you feel, but totally. here, yeah. you don't feel anything. Plaza Mayor, completed in the year 1619, under the reign of Philip III, this was the main square of the city. In 1848, the statue of the same King Philip III was placed in the center of the square. The statue was initially finished in 1616 and kept at the Casa do Campo in Madrid, only to be moved here two centuries later. It feels like you are truly in the middle of the action when you stand here with the people constantly going somewhere, having food or stopping to take a memorable photo or a video. We then took off for the festival to see Melanie C from the Spice Girls. For the copyright reasons, we cannot play the sound, but trust us, it was an incredible concert. She was fantastic. Oh Madrid, I've missed you so. Look at you. You're fucking beautiful. Muchas, muchas gracias. I love you so much. I was supposed to get my own coffee grinder, but I didn't. I forgot it at home, so I'm making this. I'm trying this Spanish coffee. I don't know what name it is. Ah, here, Tosca. I don't know if you guys ever tried it. Let me know. But um. Smells alright. Should be good. You know, overall, I noticed in Spain, so far, the food has been great. And, and on top of that, it's really cheap. It's so much, not so much, much, but yes, it's cheaper than France. Considerably cheaper. Like, you can feel the difference. Yesterday, we went a bit of shopping, and it was literally a third of the cost of what it would cost us in France. So, um... At least this is what we've noticed so far, and we've been here for a day, this is our second day. The food here is much cheaper. Yeah. I'm preparing eggs for the breakfast with some cheese, without this amazing Spanish cheese. Looks like this, it's so weird. And uh, yeah, so the cheese is really good, but you have to be careful because it's like heavy, you know? If, uh, yesterday I made a mistake, I had three slices and then I was like, oh, I couldn't move. Yes, yeah, so I'm making eggs with the vegetables, uh, with the um, cheese, some veggies on the side, and then we're gonna have watermelon and melon. And I'm also preparing coffee. So the plan for today is to go around the city, explore everything as we can, and yeah, show you guys. See you in a bit. Today we've got a few places to visit, starting with the Royal Palace of Madrid. Officially the largest function in Royal Palace in Europe, the Palacio Real Madrid has 3,418 rooms. The palace is on the site of a bygone Muslim era fortress constructed by Emir Muhammad I of Cordoba in the 9th century. The Royal Palace we see today was constructed from 1738 to 1755 under the Bourbon dynasty who had the palace built in a more French style. Italian architect Filippo Giovara devised a lavish project of enormous proportions inspired by Bernini's plans for the Louvre which was actually rejected in Paris at the time. Giovanni never got to see his project as he died in 1736. His disciple Gian Battista Sacchetti, also known as Juan Battista Sacchetti, was chosen to continue the work and design the structure to encompass a large square courtyard and resolve sideline problems by creating projecting wings. So the visit went a little bit short. <laughs> uh, it was quite funny because um, we went in thinking that we're going to show you guys how it looks like and they tell you nothing at the entrance and they tell you nothing at the, at the tickets and there is no sign whatsoever mm -hmm. and it's so funny because the first two rooms you walk in you can take pictures or videos and then they become extremely aggressive yeah. and they start really like going after people and telling them ah oh, no photo no photo and none of them speak English That's the best none of them speak English <laughs> or French none so it's like you have this Spanish person running after you and telling you something that you don't understand they make you put away the phone and like they make you like uh, seriously like military on it yeah, and they get angry you don't speak spanish yeah 
it seemed like that at least with people. I mean, I mean majority is like majority is tourists, and no one speaks Spanish, obviously. And you tell them we don't speak Spanish, they continue speaking to you in Spanish. It's fine. And we don't understand at all. I mean, no photos, of course, you would understand what they mean, but. They were very aggressive very, for no yeah. reason. Yeah. They boarded off so many areas, you cannot even get close to a chair. I mean, a bit exaggeration, I believe. I don't know why they did this. To me, I didn't have any good experience with this palace. People keep on saying online that, oh, there are so many rooms and no, everything. No, I don't think so. There are not no, so maybe many there are, but they're not open to No, they are not open to public. And I like the porcelain room, I like the dining room. You won't see that. Yes, you have to Google unfortunately, it. Unfortunately, we cannot show <laughs> you because everything is. Like no photo, no photo, that's the only thing they could say. Sinan is angry as you can um, see. I'm not angry. You are angry. So overall, I don't know. I feel like um, they were watching too much. I felt very uncomfortable. Same. I yeah, felt I felt so, very uncomfortable. But at the same at the same time, yeah. I mean I was literally walking with my phone in my pocket. I didn't try to take pictures. I put the camera cap on so no one like so I didn't touch the camera, you know. But they were still very aggressive and they were like I and don't know. And at the end I was like, okay, let's go to courtyard so we can record from the courtyard. We arrive in the courtyard, it's also bordered off. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, you cannot even go inside courtyard. Yeah. It's just, wow, I don't know. It's a different country, of course, different rules and everything. Yes. But I wasn't expecting this. At this courtyard, come on, you can't. I think, I think we're just <laughs> used to the French way of visiting uh, museums in France. In, muse in France, you go to uh, different, any palace you go to, uh, you can first of all you can record. Okay, it's fine if it, you cannot record. It's okay. Of I understand. There are some it. rules you cannot record. Not a problem. Course. It's not a problem. But to board off a courtyard and to board off <laughs> the rooms, you can't even go in to the extent that you literally just you can peek through the window. They open the window. Thank you. Yeah, or you can <laughs> look through the window. Yes, and that's it. You have some so, privilege. So yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. So you guys, if you want to come and visit the place, uh, I recommend if you don't mind all of this. And also, there are some rooms that are very beautiful. There yeah, are a couple of rooms that rooms were there, that were really nice. Uh, there was a room with porcelain, as Sinan mentioned. Then yeah, there was another that. room that I really liked, but I couldn't see it properly because you could you just had like a small, tiny door to look through. <laughs> and um, that <laughs> room was. Well, you had some privilege. You could look some through. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> like it was basically a wooden room um, made out of wood, and it's beautiful. Well, from what I saw, I just overheard a Russian guide. Where basically she mentioned that since this palace is not the original palace, the original one was the, built by the um, well the Arabs who who conquered Spain back in the day, and uh, it burned down and burned for several days, and this one is actually a newer one. So there are two. There is like a if you can see, there are small windows between the second and the third floor. Apparently though that is like an extra area that is built for like a service floor, in case there is a fire, um, the fire won't spread. And the only original thing that you have from the building that stood here before is the clock. There we go. That's what I overheard. Now you know. The Almudena Cathedral stands right across the palace and was completed as recent as 1992. It harmoniously complements the palace. The construction started in 1883 but only finished in 1992 due to the Spanish Civil War and later abandonment until 1950s. Today it is a functioning cathedral with a museum on the upper floor with access to several terraces on two levels, one on the balcony and the other on the roof above the choir. The views from here are amazing and we definitely recommend you to come here. Inside, the cathedral is colorful with sparkling gilded elements highlighting the structure, something that is unusual and fascinating for us to see. Before we continue further, 
I must mention that one may often come across these huge plush characters. I wonder how hot it must be on a sunny day for the persons inside, even though these costumes have a ventilation fan installed. Honestly, there was something sad and rather depressing seeing these huge yet cute characters just stand there in the heat. We wanted to go to the church behind me. We're gonna have to come back because there is a marriage going on, there is a ceremony. And Sinan just walked off somewhere. We're trying to find somewhere to sit down. Plaza de la Villa is where you can see some of the oldest structures of Madrid. This square is like a historic architecture book with buildings of different epochs from 15th, 16th and the 17th centuries. You can really feel the age of the city in this place, unless of course you get hungry and need to find something to eat. So it's been about half an hour, 40 minutes, and we still haven't found a place to sit because I don't know if we're picky, I don't know if we are just you know, maybe we are picky. It's not even that, it's just we're looking for something cute and no, all we see yeah, is huge special. restaurants. Yeah. Like we wanna just get on a cute cafe, you yeah, know? Yeah, something traditional. Or something cute. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any other word except cute. <laughs> anyway, so we're looking and yeah. In the end, we didn't find anywhere to eat as it was full everywhere. So we've had some drinks and we decided to pass by supermarket to get some water and chips for Sinan because he really wanted it um, and we're in this beautiful area we're going to see this uh, arc like a port of I forgot the name but you guys will see and we're in this beautiful area I was just gonna say that I love Boulevard like this because this is residential but at the same time you've got such comfortable furniture you've got nice benches you've got trees everywhere it's just so beautiful this is like the best in my opinion this is the best urban landscape that you can have when you live in a city we wanted to see puerta de alcala the neoclassical gate that was built at the end of the 18th century unfortunately it is under restoration but we still want to double check now we are on the way to the park Even though it is capital, it doesn't tire you. Yeah. It's very relaxed. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I mean, you just relax here. It's cool. We had some difficulties finding the restaurant because yeah. I believe it's too touristic. Yeah. And all the tables, I mean, they put two, three tables outside and mostly people sit inside. And but now we found a street that has the restaurants. Yeah. yeah. Because it's sort of, we are, I mean, the further away you are from the main Same destinations, thing. attractions, the better you might be able to find places. Yeah. Apparently tomorrow we have a museum to go to, so yeah, it will We'll be see if we can record it all. So far yeah. it's been, no photo, no photo, so... Yeah, in <laughs> museums you cannot record here. So far, we yeah, haven't been, so we can't generalize, so we don't know, but so far it's been quite difficult. Yeah. We'll see tomorrow. Later that evening, we saw the fantastic sugar babes. For copyright reasons, again, sorry, no sound, but they were incredible, we promise. But I know how I feel about you now. On our last day in Madrid, or Madrid, we found ourselves on the Gran Via the popular and celebrated avenue of Madrid. Think Champs-Élysées, but in Spain. It took over 20 years to complete, and honestly, feels a little bit like Arbat in Moscow. So if you want to see Madrid or Madrid from high above, 
there is this building, it looks quite Soviet. At the top, they've got a box. They've got a box, like it's a glass box. People go up and they can see things. They can just basically see the city. It's quite creepy because the glass is also at the bottom. So it's just, um, if you're not afraid of heights, you can check it out. We're in Plaza de España. One thing we noticed in Spain so far in Madrid is that you can't record in majority of places inside. It's crazy. Museum Prado, we couldn't record. We went into a couple of churches afterwards, again, couldn't record. There are like huge pictures of no photo, no photo. It's like, hello, like we can't record anything. So, um, We've, we have... <laughs> were we able to record anywhere in, in this town? I don't remember. We have recorded in the cathedral and we have recorded in the palace a little bit in the beginning. That's it. We are in the queue at the Temple de Bod and we are hoping that we can at least record something inside, take pictures at least. Um, because so far it's been no photo everywhere. We still have a few hours before we go and you have to see this dog. Due to construction of the dam in Egypt, which caused some threat to several monuments, Egypt asked some help from UNESCO, and Spain was one of the countries that helped Egypt. For that reason, in return, Egypt gifted this temple, which dates back to second century, dedicated to God. <laughs> one and a half hours later, we finally made it inside. We spent the last few moments of the trip roaming the streets and just soaking up the sun of the Spanish capital. If we were to describe this city in three words, it would be kind, warm and unforgettable. If you have a chance to visit Madrid, do that. Upset face.